the, the American Heart Association was literally placed on the map after Procter and Gamble gave them a grant of 1.7 million dollars in the early 1900s in order to promote the cottonseed oil um, waste product uh, that came from the cottonseed production because um, they, uh, they just wanted to increase their market share and they figured why not use this waste product and actually convince people that it's healthier than the fats they're already using, which were real whole fats like lard and tallow from animal foods. And so the American Heart Association was Nobody knew about them. They were a small little organization, uh, literally like five or six cardiologists that headed small, tiny little um, groups. And they gave them $1.7 million. And they were like, in exchange for that, we'd like for you to use your authority figure and tell everybody how much healthier it is <laughs> to consume those highly processed engine lubricants instead of the, the competition which we were eating, which were real whole food, animal fats. And the only reason the American Heart Association has any influence or power whatsoever is because they've accepted all of these um, tons of money and collaborations with processed food companies. And that's why they have the money. All of these organizations are in a way the same because the reason why they're large organizations is because they have sped up the process instead of relying on, um, on actually reversing diabetes, which I don't think they believe they could do. Um, it's all of those... Uh, collaborations with the food companies, unfortunately. I mean, they're, they're still recommending that dietitians um, give 45 to 65% of one's calories and carbohydrates to diabetic patients. It's like, we'll give you the carbs and then we'll give you the drug so that your body can handle the carbs that we're giving you. Anything that has more protein in it is going to suppress your appetite for the longest period of time. As much as I think keto is fantastic, um, when you're including those kinds of uh, the keto fat bombs, the amount of calories that is condensed in a small volume of food and the sheer lack of protein in them makes me not recommend them at all to any of my weight loss clients. For that reason, I prefer Quest. Quest is both very low carb and at the same time, it's high protein. And so that would be the ideal macro distribution that I recommend. Annotated and summarized. Easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points.